All right, I'm going to start talking about um, using InDesign. Um, first thing that I want to note is that um, InDesign is a fantastic uh, program for creating books, um, creating uh, articles. Uh, it's not uh, one that you'd really use for architectural presentation boards. Um, and I can go into a little bit of that, but for the most part, um, you know, it's really designed really well when you have multiple pages uh, of something, uh, multiples and multiples of pages. So for portfolio, this is brilliant. Um, one of the reasons is that um, to get to see your kind of output of images at a high resolution, you have to take a lot of processing speed, and it really slow down your process if you start to um, kind of ask for it to. Um, to every image be displayed at perfect quality. So oftentimes when I'm creating presentation boards, I'm, I'm tying vector information with, uh, with image information. And, and, and so I need to kind of have the precision of seeing the, the image at highest quality and illustrators kind of the thing do that for. So anyway, that's enough about that. So now let's talk about uh, what InDesign is really, really good at. All right, so um, to begin with, uh, typically uh, you'll start with creating a document. And so you have to immediately kind of understand uh, what it is that you're, you're trying to create um, and what orientation it should be uh, and also kind of other information like do you want to see it in facing pages or in some kind of a long strung out layout. Um, now, of course, letter and tabloid and whatnot are kind of the typical uh, layouts uh, of page size, uh, but you can make your own. Um, and with the process of kind of getting uh, online publishing, you may want to look at uh, if that's the route you're going to take to get it published. You want to make sure that those like Lulu, you know, exactly what uh, size uh, you will be using for your portfolio, and then. Uh, to put that in accordingly. So say I want a nine uh, inch wide by say seven inches. Uh, you can do that. And I'm facing pages and say I want you know ten pages of this. And facing pages is fine. Now you also can obviously edit some of this later, but you may want to start with a kind of a, a column size and a gutter size, that'd be the kind of the distance between uh, columns, and, um, and then margins and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to go with the defaults and say OK. And you'll see that immediately we have, um, we have my four columns, uh, and the first page is always kind of separate. And after that, the, the second and third pages are actually the facing pages. So here we have uh, the beginning of the second and third, and then the final page uh, being page 10 will be kind of its own thing. So that's how you get started. Now, um, that's, that's uh, the most basic. Now, when you do, you have to realize you also have uh, pages, uh, page masters. Um, so I recommend, uh, if you haven't already, to range your workspace for, say, uh, say book. And that will kind of create a, a menu structure that works really well for books. Uh, you can also use what's called the essentials. And that's usually how I have it set up. Uh, because it has basically all the things from book, but it just gives me uh, a little bit cleaner um, uh, menu structure here on this ribbon. Okay, so page masters. In InDesign, it's got basically kind of a master or style set for about anything you want to do. And it's really smart to be using the master pages and the styles. And that's really what I'm going to get into at the most part. So master pages means that for each of these pages, I can ap apply a kind of master, master style onto each one. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, my left page. And let's just imagine, um, very rarely maybe you would do this, but let's just imagine that uh, I want a line to kind of be at the base 
uh, at of each one. Let's say I'm going to create a couple of lines. And let's make sure that we understand what color they are. So those are black lines, and they are at one point. So I'm just going to make uh, this top one 0.5, and this bottom one, maybe I'll make that a little bit thicker at two point. Now you notice that you can barely see that. If you want to toggle uh, between kind of the um, this uh, where it has all the column dividers and, and guides, and then you want to then uh, toggle to maybe what it would look like on the page, printed preview. You just hit W, and it will go back and forth. Now, of course, if you have the text box open, it will actually you know, print W again and again. So you have to actually be outside of the print box and just hit W and you can see. So right now I have a blank page on the right and on the left page it'll have these kind of lines. So let's go look at the pages. So uh, all of my left ones have this and my right ones don't. So you can see how powerful that might be uh, really quickly. Uh, because essentially you can make some very broad strokes. Say I wanted um, a line, say right there. Actually, I'm going to move it to this side here. And I always want that to show up on then on my uh, right pages. So I'll go ahead and hit toggle my W. And you can see that now I have kind of global uh, power over all of my pages. Now I can create new, I can, I'm not only kind of stuck with uh, a master, I can actually um, duplicate or create a new master and I can call that say B and OK. And I can apply those as necessary so occasionally maybe I don't want to have that line so I'll apply B and on B uh, perhaps there's something else I want driving it, so you know, maybe it's a box. And we'll see what that looks like. So just on on my B master, which I've only applied to, to this. And I did that by just dragging that B over to it. I can do it also. Uh, by selecting that page and then applying the master through this uh, triangle and um, kind of series of lines here. So I can apply master and I can select the master I want to apply. Okay, so that's master pages. Um, the other thing, and this movie will just cover the basics, is I want to start to apply text. So let's go make sure you're on um, pages. Uh, so I'm on page two. And I'm going to apply a series of, of texts. So maybe I have a title that I want to show up, and then some, some body text underneath it that goes on and on. And I'll just paste in some lore. I'll paste in some lorem epson um, text. If you've never used lorem epson, it is just dummy text. It's made to look somewhat like um, it's just filler text until you actually put in the text that you want. So it's designed to look like text, but it looks a lot more like kind of you know pseudo Latin. Um, and it just kind of it gives a placeholder essentially. So so you have to realize that text is a very graphic um, thing, and we oftentimes think that our our images are the only thing that's graphically kind of uh, transforming a page. But it, in fact, it's it's as much um, the text as anything. So you can go to a site. And this is just a random site that you can put in. I want five paragraphs of text. Great, generate that, please. You just hit the generate button and it should then uh, give you a, a selection of text that you can kind of grab. 
so it's designed for graphic designers just to kind of look right but not be right so you can immediately know that I'm going to actually fill that in later. All right, so here we have my five paragraphs. I'm just going to copy that in and paste it in here. So instead of body text, I'll have this. It goes on and on. All right, now this is really important. Um, many people will kind of um, assume that, uh, well, oh, this uh, column kind of ends. And uh, so now I'm just going to, you know, create a new uh, text box and I'll just copy this stuff then to that one. But that'd be really stupid. Don't be stupid. You want to work smart. So to work smart, actually, I'm going to hit this little plus sign. And once I hit that plus sign, it gives me, you know, a kind of continuation. It allows me to create a new text box. And essentially, uh, this text is tied to that text. So there's a kind of a, a way of, of creating uh, text boxes that are actually linked together. And the beauty of that, and let's just finish this out. The beauty of that is that as I decide, I... Yeah, that's a really bad sentence. Uh, it actually just flows back into itself. So I'm not going to end up with um, kind of deleting that sentence and then there being a big blank spot at the end of this column. And in fact, it will just kind of continue to flow. Really good. All right, but you might notice that, you know, this really is really big text and so times Arminian Pro. I'm not really big fan of Minion Pro, so I want to apply styles to this. So I'm going to grab uh, page styles, and I'm going to start creating them. There's no page styles right now. And what are, I'm sorry, not page styles, paragraph styles. So the paragraph style essentially does exactly what it says. It's going to basically give, allow me to, um, to create a style that all of, say, my titles are going to be able to be selected and use that style. Okay, so let's just imagine that I have a couple of titles inside of this. You know, actually, maybe this is a subtitle. So it's not quite as important as my title. And I have a couple of those. All right. All right, but you can see this really, the hierarchy here is not very good. So I want to start to create titles that, that, that you can see the hierarchy. So I'm going to select everything right now. And I'm going to, since I really don't like Minion Pro, I'm just going to make everything aerial for now. And, and better yet, maybe I'll just make it aerial and narrow. And say I want to make this you know, more important. So maybe I'll make that um, Swiss 721. I'll make it the Swiss 21 uh, lights. CN. Okay. So, and so we can see that. Let me just um, look at it like that. All right. So, got a little issue with my line, but other than that, everything looks pretty good. All right. But I haven't really started to use um, my styles. So the reason that I went and selected the text beforehand and created it to be Arial Narrow is basically only so that I can select a bit of text that's correct. So this is Swiss LTCN. Maybe I want to bump up the, the, the font to be a little bit bigger. And when I create a new paragraph style, it will actually just take on all of the characteristics of what I've selected. So we'll notice that under basic it's, it's already got the family uh, font family it's got the size and whatnot so that's pretty much you know the basics of what I really want to do so I'll say that's okay